Hello there and welcome to the first video on looking at the core practicals for the new GCSE. What we're going to be looking at here is investigating the composition of inks using two different techniques, simple distillation and chromatography. This section of the video I have produced a couple of links on the actual YouTube video which you can click on now which will remind you of simple distillation, how to carry out chromatography, the lingo in chromatography, so mobile, stationary phase, and how to calculate retention factors. I would make sure that you're familiar with these videos before you carry on with this one. So if you're not sure on any of those, have a look through them before we move on. Okay, having seen the videos and hopefully having carried out those practicals in class, you should now be familiar with how to, to carry them all out. So what we're going to do first is focus on chromatography. And we're going to have a look at the important aspects of what it is you need to know ready for the exam. So aspect one is why is it important to draw the lines and write labels on the chromatography paper in pencil and not in ink. You also need to know why should the spots of ink be above the level of the solvent in the beaker. What is meant by the term solvent front. What would happen if you use permanent ink instead of uh, temporary ink and how could you overcome this. What is the mobile and stationary phase and which inks if any contain one dye, which are mixtures and which contain the same dye. So we're going to go through each of those sections very quickly and then we're going to have a look at some example questions. So if we go back to the first one, which is why is it important to draw the line and write labels on the paper in pencil and not ink? The key thing there is if you do it in ink, which is soluble, that will get carried up the paper as well. So you won't know where your starting point was. So pencil is insoluble and it will not get carried up the paper. Why should the spots of the ink be above the level of the solvent in the beaker? Nice and simply, if you have your solvent which is going to dissolve that ink and you suddenly cover it in it, it's going to wash the actual spots away. So it would wash the ink off into the solution and you wouldn't get a chromatogram. What is meant by the term solvent front? That is nice and simply the distance the water has travelled up the paper, which you can measure with a ruler. And then what would happen if you use permanent ink instead of water soluble ink? And how could you overcome this problem? The key thing is, if it's permanent ink, which means it's insoluble, it wouldn't dissolve and it wouldn't get carried up the paper, so it would just stay there as a dot. The solution to this would be to find a solvent that did dissolve the ink. Which is the mobile phase and which is the stationary phase? The mobile phase is the liquid or the solvent, and the stationary phase is the chromatography paper. And which inks, if any, contain one dye? That will be a pure ink. So a pure ink has only one dye, so you would only see one spot. Which are mixtures? Those are your impure ones, where you'll see more than one dot. And then which contain the same dye? That's going to be inks that have the same spots and the same retention factors, which we'll come on to later. Okay, we're just going to have a look at the skills and the maths that you need to know ready for the exam. Um, so straight away you need to be able to measure the distance travelled by a solvent. Obviously you do that with a ruler. You need to measure the height of the die above the start line and estimate it to the centre of the spot. You need to be able to manipulate apparatus, so you've got to be able to explain how you would carry out a chromatogram, carry out chromatography, how you would record your observations. So for example, how would you know there are, how many dyes there are in each ink? How would you figure that out? How would you calculate the distance travelled by the solvent? And how would you work out the height of each die above the start line? Then, obviously, you've got to be able to carry it out safely, so if you're going to describe a practical, you need to make sure that there are no risks or hazards involved. In terms of the maths, you should be able to interpret the chromatogram, you should be able to tell me how many spots there are, you should be able to tell me how far they've travelled, and so on. You need to record your measurements accurately, so it's got to be to one decimal place. So if you use a ruler, don't say it's gone 5 centimetres if it's got 5.3. Be specific. And then substituting those values into the expression for retention factor and being able to calculate the retention factor. Again, if you're not sure on how to do any of those skills, go back to the previous videos and have a look. So let's have a look at some example questions then that could come up. So this one here, we've got a chromatogram and it says mixtures of coloured substances can be separated by paper chromatography. Paper chromatography was used to separate a mixture of blue and red inks. A spot on the mixture is placed on chromatography paper as shown in figure one. Give a reason for the start, the, why the start line is drawn in pencil rather than an in ink. Again, if you've been paying attention in this video, you should know that, that is because the pencil is insoluble, which gives you the mark. And if you could go into a description, that would be even better, saying that chromatography would separate the ink in an ink line. Next question. 
The chromatography paper with the spot of a mixture on it was placed in the beaker with the bottom of the paper in water. On figure 2, complete the diagram showing the position of the chromatography paper with the spot of mixture at the start of the experiment. So nice and simply here, you've got to remember that the spot should not be in the water. So you draw a diagram similar to this. You need to have the paper just touching the water, and then you need to have a line drawn in pencil, and then an ink spot about central. So if you were to draw that, you would get one mark for the ink in the central on the start line, and then one mark for the start line and the ink both being above the water. Question 3. The chromatography was carried out and this result was shown in figure 3. The blue spot had moved 14.5 centimetres and the solvent front had moved 15.3. Calculate the RF, the retention factor, value for the substance in the blue spot, giving your answer to two significant figures. Because you know the retention factor is going to always be between 0 and 1, two significant figures here is two decimal places. So to do that, you look at the distance traveled by the die, which it tells you here, 14.5 centimeters. The distance traveled by the solvent front, which again you know is 15.3, divide them by each other. So you get one mark for dividing them by each other, and then one mark for getting 0.95 to two decimal places, two significant figures. Next question. You've got P, Q, R, and S are mixtures of food colorings. They are investigated using paper chromatography. Figure 4 shows the chromatogram at the end of the experiment. Which mixture contains an insoluble food, food colouring? That one, if it's insoluble, it will not dissolve, it will not move up the paper. So you look for the one that's got something on your original line, which in this case is mixture Q. Although some of them are soluble, not all of it, which is what you can see here. The next part, it says... Explain by referring to figure 4 which mixture is separated into the greatest number of soluble food colorings by this chromatography experiment. So you get one mark for saying which one and one mark for the explanation. So to do that, have a look along and find the one with the most spots. It's nice and simple. P's got three, Q has got three, we ignore the insoluble bit, R has got one, and S has got four. So from the data we've got there, you get one mark for mixture S and then one mark saying it had more spots or given the exact number it had four spots. Okay, on to the distillation part of the core practical. So you can obviously separate inks from chromatography but distillation works as well. And these are the important things that you need to be able to know. Why do you need to heat the tube of ink gently? What is the temperature of the thermometer when water is distilling off? Why does the collection tube need to be surrounded by crushed ice? What are the main errors in this procedure and how can you improve the procedure? So, if we go through, why do you need to heat the tube of ink gently? The key thing is, if you're doing distillation, you make sure that you're not evaporating more than one liquid. So if you heat it too vigorously, you're going to evaporate more than one, which you don't want to do. What is the temperature of the thermometer when water is distilling off? That's the boiling point of water, which is going to be 100 degrees C. Why does the collection tube need to be surrounded by crushed ice? Once you've evaporated it, you need to condense it back down as quickly as possible. So the answer is to condense the gas back into a liquid. And what are the main errors in this procedure? There are a few here. The main one being overheating and collecting more than one liquid. So you might evaporate it and then you get two liquids coming off. Forgetting to turn the water on around the condenser so you're not collecting the liquid that's been evaporated quickly enough and heating it too strongly, which can break the glass and can also lead to having more than one solution collected. And then finally, how can you improve the procedure? Simple distillation obviously is used to separate a couple of liquids, but if you've got more than that, go with fractional distillation, which is much better um, separation between the liquids and it's easier to purify the liquids. And then the final section of this video, just make sure, ready for the exam, that you know how to measure the temperature and that you can measure it accurately, reading it at eye level. Make sure you can heat it gently and safely, remembering to remove the Bunsen burner so that it doesn't overheat, so that the temperature doesn't get too high. Manipulate the apparatus for simple distillation. What that means is, if you're given a question that says, how do you separate a mixture of water and ethanol, you would be able to say how you do it. They might give you the the boiling point so you might be able to turn around and say heat it up to 78 which is the boiling point of ethanol but keep it below 100 so you don't evaporate the water 
As soon as the ethanol is collected through the condenser and into a test tube, you can then start to collect the water. Record observations, so the colour of distillate, so that will be again what we've just been talking about, saying right if you've got ethanol, that's colourless liquid, if you had dyed water, which is the one that you'll have seen in my investigations, that dyed water might be orange, green, whatever colour it's been dyed. So you can say that it has been separated because there will be a difference in colour. And then obviously again the ability to carry out the investigation safely. Safety goggles at all times, hair tied back so that doesn't set on fire, not touching the apparatus because it will be hot, not overheating the equipment. Again if you're unsure on any of this go back and watch the videos which I linked to at the beginning of this one. And that concludes this video.